We'd like to think that our brains and our bodies are the best of friends. We know with Parkinson's that that really isn't so. Some of the things that we need to do are act and react and practice this with Parkinson's. You see the, the big uh, move toward boxing and Parkinson's. My father and I used to do something very similar, and what that is, is that you have to learn how to act toward a body, trying to get it to move, and that body that's moving around is inconsistent, and you have to do some guesswork, and then the brain starts to take over and tell the body where to poke or where to move, and then the reaction of having someone poking at you and putting your hand up to block it and so forth. By practicing a little bit more, you can get this under control to a point that it becomes a little easier to do those reaction times, like when you see that the door is about to slam shut and you need to grab at the door. Uh, the child that runs in front of the, the car, you can go into a reactionary time and so forth. But the challenge, the challenge is what keeps the synapse going. You make new synapses every time and it keeps you, your brain and your body, having that brain-body remembering thing going on that you don't have to call upon special tools every single time that you need to move, which can usually cause freezing instead of what you actually want to do. So today, some of our special equipment is going to be a balloon, a uh, yeah, suppose pin, and a good length of string or something that you can tie the balloon with. You're also going to want like a tennis size ball or a whiffle ball or even a smaller ball like this and half a pack of playing cards just uh, one set of red and one set of black of uh, the different denominations. I can't even remember what those are called. I haven't played cards in so long. Probably the hardest thing is going to be blowing up the balloon, but I found a way that even people with long fingernails or possibly some motor skill problems can get that balloon blown up and tied off. So of course, we all remember that you stretch the balloon, and then you blow it up, holding that part with your teeth, and once you get it to the size you want, I think I'll go a little bit bigger. Now. Twist it just a little and take your clothespin and look at the different parts of the clothespin. Don't get in where there's a hole in the clothespin. Get past the hole where the pieces of the wood actually touch together. Hold this down like that and that way you can take your nice long piece of string and I say long so that you have a lot to work with and work in a hurry and make your tie and I'm just going to tie it a couple of times and I have a balloon. With this balloon you can go into the middle of your room and you can do your own reactions by bouncing that balloon up and down and having to react to it. You can see how um, having yourself standing in the room you can really bat that up pretty high and it's going to cause you to make the brain be thinking rather than telling yourself I have to move my hand to hit the balloon, I have to move my hand to hit the balloon. The brain is going to start taking over and it's going to start reminding the muscles how to work. Remember this is probably not going to hold as well as if you tied the balloon so as soon as you do the balloon you're probably going to want to uh, do this exercise within an hour. Also, put that balloon down on the floor and give it a few kicks. You're not going to hurt anything, really. Kick it around with your foot. And try and make yourself go left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. And with your hands, you can try and go left and right. Or you can just make it as a freeform thing and whatever goes out there goes out there. You can use one hand and see how many times you can go and just challenge yourself with reacting. This way it doesn't require that you have another person like you have to with boxing and so many other reactionary things. Now you can take a tabletop and I recommend rolling the uh, tablecloth up so that you have a bumper on one side. And this is swat the ball. 
Now, this one I would prefer that you do standing unless you really need to be sitting. So I'm going to stand up here, and you'll see that a reaction is going to be to keep the ball from going off the table. You want to go left, right, left, right, and try and make that ball go just as fast as you can, keeping your eyes obviously on the ball. What's going to happen is that your brain is going to start watching the ball and the hand movements are going to become more automatic. So you may want to start slow and just stop the ball if you're having some real reactionary time problems. And then slowly but surely get to a point that you don't have to stop the ball even if you are still going slow. And then as it starts to get easier, continue to challenge yourself to roll the ball around on the table. And of course you can use different size balls. They're going to roll a little differently. Different weight balls roll differently. And I suppose if you wanted, you could really challenge yourself and try and get two going at the same time. And that isn't an exercise that we're going to worry about with cardio by any means, but you're going to find that uh, you are going to get a little bit winded if you're not used to really quick reactions, even if it's just your hands. You could also do it with the balloon because it's an odd shape and, well, we don't want to do it with the balloons and the balls, but you could do it with the balloon. You might want to uh, take the tails off here, but you can do it because it bounces around and does the same sort of thing as the balls. It's just got a little more mind of its own. Another thing that can be done is to take your deck of cards and have like all hearts for red and all spades for the other and either mess them up or give them a little shuffle. Oh, I'm a terrible shuffler with half a deck. Okay. Now you can lay them face up on the table just as they're coming out of the pack. And this is another one that you're going to want to stand up to do just so that you get a little more action and a little more reaction. Now, instead of picking them up like pickups, what we want to do perhaps is take the right hand and we'll just use the right hand. And we'll go through the deck starting with ace, red ace. Then we look for the deuce, the three, the four, the five, and so forth. And then you're going to do your left hand. Maybe go with the left hand on, the ace of black, the deuce, the three, the four, the five, and go, go forth from there. Then go with every other hand, uh, left, right, left, right, through the red. Ace, deuce, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jack, queen, king. You see what's happening with the hands moving like this. Then you can just go ahead and kind of mix them up and do it again. You can almost play your own little games with this. You know, you could maybe do both of the aces with with black ace and red ace and black deuce and red deuce and so forth through the cards. Now, what I'd also like to have you consider is tossing them on the floor. And I realize that with this one there may be an issue with you tossing and picking them up, but you can always leave them for later if there's someone who lives in the home and you don't want to have to wait for them to be there uh, while you play this game. But you can kind of do the same thing with a little bit more uh, area. I would suggest using just red, one uh, set of red cards, one set of black cards, not mixed together until you want to start really uh, challenging yourself because it's going to be harder to find those cards. Make sure you're going to be able to see the numbers that are on the cards 
from a distance. So you may have to actually go and find a new set or a new deck of cards. As you can see, these are awfully small, and so the person standing and, and trying to see those from a, a standing position and putting their feet down and going uh, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, doing ace, deuce, three, four might be a little bit difficult. But this is sort of a nice form of twister without having anybody have to spin the twist uh, score thing. What was that thing called anyway? I used to love to play twister, but we always played sort of a combat game of twister. I've done this with different colors uh, in our support group and if you're a support group facilitator or you like to be the person who leads your support group in some exercises, our support group just had the best time. What I had done was put colored spots on the floor all over and they could see those and then I put some on a table and the people who were ambulatory of course stood outside and the people who were not sat at the table and what I would do is I'd call out uh, left and then red and right green right blue and so forth so you do have to have one person who's going to be calling that so it's sort of like adult twister once again we had more fun the people actually at the table were swatting on the colors trying to keep and block blocking the other people that were on the table so that they couldn't reach and they had to reach farther and farther across the table the folks that were out uh, trying to step on them had their feet far apart and the thing was that their minds were working and they were having a good time they weren't having to say oh my right foot has to move we started slow and just calling out right or left because it's obviously feet or hands and slowly but surely we just picked up the pace a little bit and we just had the best time I'd really encourage you to be doing things like this because it's going to keep you sharp and you know what you don't have to have Parkinson's in order to keep sharp with some of these things I think anybody can benefit. Join me on Facebook and continue to go through my YouTube videos. I have an awful lot of posts for Tai Chi. There will be some for Qigong as I take some training for that. I'm a master fitness trainer and any time that you feel that you would like to have a video made just for you, you can private message me through the Facebook accounts. So, have fun with it.